This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned all the other stuff. He was writing his book. Uh, this stuff, what I thought were stupid creative decisions, set me off. It was the fuse that lit the dynamite. But the fact is, I had a lot of other problems going on at the same time. My health had been failing for the last six to eight months. My serious neck and back problems were getting worse, and so was the problem I had with the reflexes in my legs. Of course, I would never admit that any of that was happening. I kayfabed it. I didn't say a word about it. But these are ongoing problems, and I could tell my body had had enough. I couldn't perform the way I wanted to, and I was frustrated, and I was scared. And in my mind, I was feeling less of a man than I wanted to be, less of a man than I had been. And while I was going through all the frustrations of my health issues, I was also dealing with problems with my marriage to Deborah and problems with my kids moving to England. I was completely stressed out with so many things going on and the bullshit just kept piling up on me. Finally, I'd had enough. As far as I was concerned, it was a done deal. I was gone. Uh, and then he says, uh, on June 10th, 2002, I walked out on the greatest job I ever had, but the bottom line, I was just overwhelmed mostly by my health problems. You don't know how it feels to have these kinds of problems unless you're actually physically going through it. They just weigh you down and it changes your whole outlook. And he's acknowledged in years since that because he's got all these stresses and pressures at work of, and I'm sure some of this is something he's still trying to wrap his head around. He was the biggest, brightest star in the business. And he pushed for a change in his character that really changed his standing in the business and affected business overall. I mean, we've all acknowledged that Austin turning heel hurt the overall wrestling business, not just WWE and not just Steve Austin's income, but the entire wrestling business. And you couple that with the fact that now Vince doesn't have the same creative competition he had when there was an ECW and a WCW, and now it's just him and he's trying to find his next hit. And he looks to guys that maybe Austin doesn't want to do business with. So Austin's going to be annoyed with that. He also had the injury with Booker T. Uh, he got married to Deborah. Perhaps that was not the best decision in hindsight. They're not going to be getting along here. They've got some issues there's, now there's, you know, kids moving to England. He acknowledges he's hurting. So he's probably taking more pills than he might normally to help subside the pain. And he acknowledges that he's probably drinking more than he should. So you just add all of that together and it's a real pressure cooker where something's got to give and the path of least resistance may be just saying, man, fuck this. I'll come back when this is the place I want it to be. And he walks out. I mean, this is uh, a recipe for disaster. And really I'm glad that walking out is all that happened because we've heard a lot of guys when they get in these sort of pressure cooker situations. They do drink too much and maybe they get behind the wheel of a car and bad things happen. And thankfully mm -hmm. that didn't happen here, but this is, uh, not a good scenario in any era. No, it's not. And again, what would be the answer? How could we address, uh, his separation anxiety when his two daughters are going to leave the country? Sure. I mean, as, as, and I know there's a lot of parents or, or people that have siblings or or whatever, listen to us, uh, people have kids and have, or have siblings. How would you feel if they, your two, two of your offspring were going to move out of co the country? It's just, hell, I don't know how I would react. I mean, I would be depressed as hell because I would take the responsibility as Steve d did, that it was my fault. The second thing with Deborah, who I think the world of, she was never an issue for us. Uh, and, uh, you know, always professional, uh, you know, she, she got in the business accidentally because she was married to Steve McMichael and the fact that she was a very beautiful woman who had a, a, a vent for, uh, for, uh, uh, entertainment. She'd gone to the Lee Strasberg school of acting. You know, she's, I think Mrs. Mrs. Illinois or something at one time, uh, obviously people remember she's a beautiful woman, still is a beautiful woman with a master's degree from the. From Roll Tide, University of Alabama, in, in, in criminal justice, I think. So she was uh, she was fine. So I think, and, and I can just tell you from my marital experience, excluding Jan, that I, I take a lot. As I said earlier, I take a lot of blame for my failed marriages. I had guilt. I had I had a lot of guilt uh, for years because you know I had a I had a daughter by each wife, 
And so that all, all, always solves, uh, causes some issues. It's not a normal scenario, maybe more normal now than it was back in that era. But, you know, I, I took that on the chin. I was, that was me. I screwed this up. You screwed up the family. And it's your fault, JR. It's your fault. And so I think Steve had the same theories, Conrad. Kids leaving, health failing, marriage dissolving, creative at work. And so where we're making the creative at work the issue here, and it was an issue, there's no doubt, as Steve wrote in his book, there's no doubt it was an issue. However, it wasn't the biggest issue, in my opinion, and it certainly sure as hell wasn't, I can safely say, the only issue. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.